nuts and bolts of room setup. How you set up a room for any event is key to the functionality and comfort of that space for presenters and attendees alike. For the purpose of this discussion, we'll use the term speakers or presenters to denote anyone who will be the center of attention. This includes, but is not limited to, the bride and groom, guest panel, performers, and musicians. The term attendees, audience, and guests will refer to all the participants who are there to focus on whoever the presenters are. Before setting up a room or outdoor space for any event, go through a checklist of considerations that are vital to the success of your room design. The purpose of the event, number of participants, number and type of presenters, type of space, indoor, outdoor, flat, slope, terraced, hard versus soft floor, etc. Services to the room, catering and floor instruction, for example, and AV requirements. Also make sure you are aware of and responsive to safety and access requirements and regulations. These include room capacity restrictions, fire codes relating to chair and table spacing, capacity of egress points, type and source of lighting, signage, heights of stairs, ramps, risers, and handrails, ventilation and fire protection devices, as well as ADA re regulation compliance. Once you have this information compiled for each area you will be using, you can begin to diagram your setups. Start with a blueprint of each space that shows entrances and exits, any existing structures like pillars or built-ins, ceiling height, windows, pay close attention to the direction they face in time of day to prevent harsh sunlight and projection screen problems, and traffic flow as it relates to how people will access and egress from the space. Even take into account the materials the space is made of. If the room is made of tented fabric, you'll need to provide space for climate control devices like heaters and fans, and your sound amplification equipment may be more sizable. If the room has air walls, pay close attention to what will happen on each side of them so you don't inadvertently make one room larger to accommodate a setup while making the one next to it too small for a setup you've already dedicated to it. Marble floors and walls may require sound buffering draping, which will require designated space. The functionality of each space is paramount, but the convenience and comfort of your guests cannot be stressed too much. Use these rules of thumb for room setups to ensure your guests have room to do whatever they are there to do, with ample personal space for each individual. For a stand-up cocktail reception, you need 8 square feet of space per person in the room. If there are food stations, you need, to tw you need 12 to 15 square feet. For a seated dinner, you need 20 square feet of space per person in the room layout. Remember to factor in the server and buffet stations before estimating space. If there is a dance floor, an additional 3 square feet of space per person to the space allotments above. Allow a minimum of 4 feet between the chair backs at round tables. More than 5 feet is desirable. Note, although full-length table linens look great, they are difficult to sit under and lead to table clearing accidents. Half length are preferred if people are getting up and down frequently. When seating people at round tables, put no more than 6 people at a 4 footer, 10 people at a 5 footer, and 12 people at a 6 footer. Whenever possible, reduce these numbers by 2 for each table. If the round table is used as a workspace for a full formal china seating, reduce the number per table by at least two people or more. Leave each person 30 linear inches of work or dining space on the table. Leave ample room for servers at tables, either 12 plus inches of space between the chairs or use a crescent setup so one quarter or more of the table is chairless and allows the server access. Do not put more than 15 seats in any row with an aisle on each side. Your attendees shouldn't have to displace very many people to get to their seat or feel claustrophobic in an endless row. For ideal comfort and accessibility, allow 24 inches or more between the back of one seat and the front of the table or seat behind it. Although fire regulations allow for just 12 inch inches, human beings are getting bigger and anything less than 24 inches is just plain uncomfortable. Unless your chairs are super wide, allow at least three inches between each one. People need to be able to move their arms without hitting the person next to them. 
If you have a stage, it should be 8 to 16 inches high for groups of 100 or less, 16 to 24 inches high for groups of 100 to 300, 24 to 32 inches for 300 to 500 people, and 36 to 48 inches for groups of more than 500 attendees. Now that you have all the room requirements other than presenter and attendee setup addressed and penciled into your blueprint, and you've marked on a ruler with all the rules of thumb measurement equivalents, you are ready to choose and draw in your setup. Note, there are a number of meetings and conference planning software applications available that facilitate this process as well, so if you prefer to do your diagramming digitally, you have that option. Here are the standard room setups and guidelines for their use. Auditorium. Also sometimes referred to as theater style, auditorium seating is typically rows of seats in blocks separated by vertical and horizontal aisles from the crow's perspective. Although theater style seating may have tables or desks, auditorium seating typically does not. This style is ideal for events where you need to accommodate a lot of people who will focus on a stage where activity takes place for entertainment purposes, ceremonies, or presentations that do not require the audience to do any more than listen and watch. Banquet. Banquet style setups are table and chair setups. The tables are almost always round, but squares and oblongs can be used. See spacing rules of thumb and reduce seating numbers by two. Banquet style is not ideal for presentation, although it is frequently used for them, because some of the attendees have to turn their chairs around or look over their shoulders. The solution for this is to set the tables as crescents. Banquet setups are ideal for social events of all types when food and beverage are being served. If there is a head table, stage, or dance floor at the event, place the tables in an arc around it. This allows easy access to the dance floor and the minimum of view obstruction for the table guests. Boardroom. Boardroom style is a large table where, with people sitting around it. It is not ideal for groups over about 25 because hearing from one end of the table to the other can be difficult. However, it is perfect for small gatherings of people who need to work together. Give them 30 inches of workspace. It is also a very nice setup for formal or informal small group dinner parties. Just keep the table decorations low so everyone can see and hear each other. Ceremony seating. Ceremony seating can be very precise or quite creative. Traditional ceremony seating is in rows, whether straight, angled, or curved. But depending on venue, you can have blankets on the grass with throw pillows, stand on chairs, stairs with the ceremony taking place on the landing, use rows of backless cushion benches, have a center dais with stools spiraling around it, and even ask the guests to stand wherever they wish. Whatever style you choose, or invent yourself, remember the rules of personal space. Give each person at least 30 inches side to side and 24 inches in the front. Cabaret. Cabaret style seating is essentially a modification of banquet or crescent round setups. The focus of the room is always a stage or raised dais, but the space may be irregular, terraced, or have a series of levels and balconies. Cabaret style seating is used when there is a performance during or before which food and beverage are served. Be very mindful of traffic flow, server access, and accessibility to exits when implementing this style, and make sure every individual has the maximum amount of personal space as established in the rules of thumb. Classroom. Classroom style allows each member of the audience 30 linear inches of workspace on a table or desk. It is ideal for any event in which the attendees will want to take notes about the presentation or manipulate objects in a workshop environment that doesn't require special equipment. Remember to follow the rules of thumb and be generous, as generous with space as possible for the comfort of your attendees. Rows may be straight, curved, or angled in a chevron. Also make sure to use video monitors and a sound system if you, are more than if you have more than five rows so everyone can see and hear. Side note, one of our pet peeves about classroom style setups is how uncomfortable the chairs used by most venues are. If you want to do a great service to your attendees, give each one a seat pillow as a welcoming gift. Cluster. The cluster setup typically uses three oblong tables, two parallel to each other and one across the end of those two, to create a large workspace surrounded by chairs with one empty end facing the presenter. This configuration is ideal for collaboration and hands-on applications during training, team building, negotiation, brainstorming, and workshops. It also gives each participant ample room for a laptop computer and other devices. Conference. 
Conference seating is a general term used for seating setups, but in its truest form, truest form is a much expanded version of boardroom seating. It is comprised of one very large table, basically made up of many oblong tables and surrounded by chairs. Conference tables could conceivably be infinitely large, but great care must always be taken regardless of the size to make sure everyone at the table has full audio and visual connection with everyone else. This technology be can be cost prohibitive and usually outweighs the benefit. One time that conference setup is very appropriate and doesn't require AV support is at an affair like a reenactment of a royalty themed gala where guests dine in historic style and don't worry about socialize with, socializing with anyone but those within hearing range. Crescent rounds. This modification of banquet style allows ease of service access to tables and unobstructed line of sight to where the action is. It is great for weddings, any type of presentation that uses round rather than oblong tables, or desks and faces a stage or dais. E-shape. The E-shape is great when a panel of presenters is speaking to a relatively small group, say 36 people. In this configuration, the panelists are seated along a row of tables and the audience is seated on both sides of three legs of tables. This configuration works comfortably if each person has plenty of room in all directions, 30 plus inches. Freeform. Use your imagination on this one. You could build half pyramids of staggered blocks for people to sit on or arrange an eclectic assortment of furniture to support an event theme, even create a living room or lounge space. The sky is the limit, just use all the rules of thumb that apply so your guests are, above all, comfortable. Head table. You can put a head table in any room setup. It is most commonly used for ceremonial festivities like wedding receptions and roasts, toasts and recognition events. It's a very good idea to raise the head table for, large, uh, for a large audience using the staging rules of thumb, less a foot or so. Although it could be argued that 30 inches is enough linear space for each person at the head table, we advocate doubling it in most cases. This allows for full skirts, surprise awards hidden under it, and the ability to rotate seating to face a podium or bride and groom. Hollow square. As a rule, don't seat more than 24 people at any hollow square setup. This setup is typically eight oblong tables set two by two with all the chairs on the outside of the square facing in. It gives the guests the ability to easily exchange dialogue and visuals and is ideal for events like art classes where the model is posed in the center and each person has ample workspace. Octagons and geometrics. The octagon and other geometrics are modifications of the hollow square and serve the same functions. Reception. Traditional reception setups do not provide seating. They may have a number of stand-up height, round, or square tables under four feet. These tables allow people to set down their food and beverage to greet each other, exchange business cards, etc. In this setup, make sure there are tables along the wall where people can deposit their empty glasses and plates and have someone bussing the stand-up tables regularly. Nothing is less attractive at a cocktail reception than unattended dirty dishes. Theater or lecture. These styles are the same and may be on a flat surface or stair-stepped. The seating is always at an angle facing the stage and has aisles accessing rows of chairs. Use the rules of thumb for setting up this style and when you have more than five rows, use sound amplification and video monitors as needed. This seating style works equally well for ceremonies, entertainment, and presentations where the audience can just sit and enjoy. T-shape. This configuration serves the same purpose as the E-shape configuration, but is ideal for smaller groups or focus groups working, uh, working hands-on at workshops. U-shape. Give each attendee 30 linear inches of workspace on the table and skirt the inside of the table, not the outside where the guests will be seated. This arrangement is not suitable for more than 25 people because those at the ends will have trouble hearing and participating. You are now armed with all the information essential to configuring each space you use at, event, at each event you plan. Just remember to factor everything you need into a space before you choose and configure the setup, and your presenters and attendees will always be pleased with the functionality and comfort of their experience.